Hey guys, what's going on? Thank you so much for watching today. It's the end of another month and that means it's time for another dev diary from Prehistoric Kingdom. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the May dev diary and everything that we have going on and coming up in the game. If you guys missed it, Prehistoric Kingdom is in early access right now, which means that it is not a complete polished game, but it is released to everyone and you are able to purchase and play on Steam. So let's go ahead and jump into what this May Dev Diary has for us. Welcome to the May update. In this month's post, we'll be taking a brief look at what we've been up to over the last couple of weeks, as well as sharing some statistics from the first month of early access. May was a great month for the team. Having just released into early access, we were able to reach brand new audiences. Hello, <laughs> and read a lot of constructive community feedback. Every bit helps us understand what we can improve and what people like would like to see in the future. Currently, we are working on the game's first minor update, a small patch that introduces quality of life improvements and a smattering of content while we work on our much larger quarterly updates. Memory management and loading issues inherent to uh, Unity prevented us from releasing the patch earlier. However, we expect it to drop in the next week or so. Fantastic. I personally haven't been having too many problems with the game, um, but I know there are some players, I believe, on um, like lower spec computers that were having some problems. So really cool that they are addressing that and going to get that out to us very, very soon. Getting into our first little section here, we have notifications. Sort of like a sibling to the state icons currently in game, notifications will alert players to things they should take a look at. Customizable in nature players can pick exactly what they want to get notified for. Very cool. So we have a UI concept art picture here. Um, it looks like there's some building alerts, some habitat alerts, some food alerts on there. So just kind of more of the husbandry animal management portion of the game, which is really cool to see that that is continuing to be developed. We knew they were going to make, um, you know, changes and, and keep kind of developing that part of the game, but it's, it's cool to see the, uh, the little sneak peek of the UI there. It looks pretty intuitive, so very cool. Food production system. Management is an area of the game that we are determined to flesh out as the project develops further. As I was just mentioning, I knew that they were still working on this. As a small start, Mao worked on our new food production mechanics. Unlike at launch, feeders will now empty, requiring them to be refilled. As you place new feeders and refill old ones, the park's dietary supply will decrease. Keep an eye on your inventory from the animal management menu and order new shipments to meet the demand. Oh, very cool. So you have to order depending on what animals you have in your park, what they'll be eating. That's a really cool aspect. Uh, I really like that, that you have to kind of order exactly what you're going to need and keep up on it. Very cool. So it looks like we have plants, fruit, kibble, meat, fish, and insects. That's fantastic. With this new system in place, we've added fish and insects to the flat feeders to provide additional options for you and your animals. Players can also find two new styles available for the flat feeder, wood and stone. Really cool. That's such a small little detail, but I absolutely love it because then you can just fit whatever kind of habitat you're making. Uh, it can kind of just fit right in. That's awesome. Nathan, our hand, our hard surface artist, created a large and small water trough for animals to drink from. These new items will allow animals like desert dwelling protoceratops to drink without the need of a lake in their habitat. Fantastic. So yeah, so just some water troughs here, a large one and a small one. When I first saw this picture, I thought this was a seal for some reason from like, I don't know, I was looking at it on my phone and it was small and I was like, why are they using a seal for size reference? But this is the Satakosaurus uh, in game. So that makes, makes a lot more sense rather than a seal. Anyway, we're going to get some uh, water troughs. I really like the look of these. They're very simple. Um, easy to hide in something, I'm sure, if you wanted to kind of cover this up. So really cool. Work in progress water visuals. Okay, awesome. 
Moving on to animal nurseries. In May, our concept artist Ida developed new designs for a medium and small animal nursery, significantly shorter and more affordable than the large variant currently in game. These smaller modules will allow for less intrusive facility building. Awesome. I really like this idea. One thing that I would be curious about, and if the devs are watching, is that in game, uh, will the smaller one only be able to uh, make the smaller dinosaurs and you have to get the bigger ones to get to get the larger animals? That might be a cool little aspect playing in challenge mode, I think they're calling it, um, where you have to like, you know, earn the money to get the big nursery to be able to uh, hatch the really large dinosaurs, but if you want to just get like a small one for less money, you can get the smaller dinosaurs. I would be curious to see if they've, if they're going to incorporate that some way, or if it's just purely for, you know, building. If you want to build a smaller building, you can uh, hide the smaller ones a little bit better within the modular building pieces. But you can see size reference here with our T-Rex next to what will be the medium and the small nursery. Very cool. Habitat markers and scenery. This is my favorite part of the update. I'm very excited to see this. So given the creative tools available in Prehistoric Kingdom, it was only a given that the community would want a way to create fully custom enclosures. So we'd like to introduce habitat markers. These are a new type of fence that define an invisible paddock boundary. Unlike regular fences, animals are not held back by habitat markers and will require the usage of terrain, rocks, or other methods to keep creatures inside the pen. As they're so visually different to many other items in the game, creating and noodling around with the custom shader was a real treat. Despite their rambunctious aesthetic, habitat markers are invisible during regular gameplay and will only appear when building, selecting a habitat, or in the management view. Awesome. I love it. So yeah, no barriers, basically. Really cool because I actually just created a habitat. You guys will see it in a couple days. It's not a real habitat, though, because the game doesn't consider it to be since I didn't use the barriers. I created a completely custom uh, perimeter fence, and it's really cool to see that I will be able to do something like that when I actually play the game, when I get the animals in and I want to make sure that it actually works for um, for an in-game habitat. Really cool. We've got plenty of new scenery items in the new patch too. We love to hear that, including tropical lantern posts, customizable animal silhouettes, and beautiful topiaries to decorate your parks. There are so many beautiful concept designs yet to be added. We really think you'll love what we're cooking up behind the scenes. A blog post will be released once the update is live to show off all the new items. Here's a sneak peek from social media earlier this month. So yeah, if you guys missed it, they did release this. So we have some animal silhouettes, tree silhouettes, uh, and then some topiaries, which I absolutely love. It looks like we have one with like real, um, I wouldn't probably say real tusks, but like, you know, tusks, but then ones that have the topiary that make up the tusks as well of the mammoth. And then I love this one right here with like the flowers coming off the tail. Very cool. And then of course we have some like very plain, you know, rectangular and um, uh, other little topiaries there. And here's a little sneak peek of what it looks like in game with the Lambiosaurus, I think. I'm learning my dinosaurs better and better every day, but I'm pretty sure that's what that one is. <laughs> Regardless, that's exactly what it'll look like in game. So very cool. Moving on to state of development. So early access launch. The early access launch was certainly an exciting event for the team. We had a peak of over 2,500 congruent players with over 40,000 total unique players in the first month. Three hot fixes were released that include general bug fixes, improved memory performance, and the small rendering improvements that were especially notable on low end machines. But the optimization doesn't end there. We've still got some further room for memory optimization, and after extensive testing on all of our rendering systems, we were finally able to pinpoint the heaviest GPU hitters. This has allowed us to create internal optimization plans so that we can work towards more performance improvements alongside the 
the planned content updates. Part of this effort includes the removal of our previous weather package in favor of one that not only looks better, but has shown significantly improved rendering performance on some of our test systems. Between 15 and 50%. Wow. Please make sure to try out different graphical presets to find out what works best for your system. How beautiful is that screenshot with the light coming through? That's gorgeous. <laughs> I love that. Improving animals with early access out in the wild. We have begun putting more resources into improving animal management, which is the backbone of developing better AI. You will see more from this in the future as the locomotion overhaul is currently slated for our first major update in July. So July is the month to keep a lookout for. Next major update uh, is coming then. Uh, this is a little shout out, catch them live. They've actually been streaming quite a lot on, uh, on Twitch. So if you guys are interested, you can go to this link, click here and you can go to their Twitch channel and catch them when they go live. Uh, and then the last little section, I believe, upcoming developments, everybody's favorite topic, new species. <laughs> and I'm absolutely super excited about the species they decided to add. You can see it right there. The Dilophosaurus, I think, looks amazing. I love the pattern on its back. Let me go ahead and read this, and then we can scroll down and, and look at these screenshots here. The first species announced for quarterly update in July is the Dilophosaurus, with its signature double crests acting as a flamboyant mohawk, this carnivore is ready to make an entrance in every prehistoric park. One down, two more to reveal. What could it possibly be? So we have two more, three animals in total coming to the major update, but Dilophosaurus, look at how good that looks. The texture on his face and his skin, I love it. And his little flamboyant mohawks, <laughs> the crests on his head, very cool. Very cool, and I am very curious to see some of the other uh, color patterns and things uh, that come in game, because this is clearly only one of them. So looking forward to the Dilophosaurus in July. Uh, and that is about it. We have some community spotlights at the very bottom here. People have been making some absolutely phenomenal things. So I'll just kind of scroll through these very, very quickly because they are amazing. Absolutely amazing. Look at what is possible with the scaling tools. You can literally create anything you'd like. Um, so yeah, that is it, you guys, for the May update. What do you think? Are you excited? Have you picked up the game yet? I know I ask this all the time. Let's go back down and look at the Dilophosaurus as we end. I ask this all the time, but if you guys picked it up, if you have, are you enjoying it? If you haven't, are you going to? Um, I want to hear from you. I want to hear what you guys think. Uh, as I mentioned, there is a Prehistoric Kingdom build coming out in uh, two days, so on the 2nd, on June 2nd. Hopefully you guys enjoy that, but keep a lookout on the channel for it when it comes out. If you guys are interested in future Prehistoric kingdom content that is a tongue twister go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss out and leave a like on this video if you made it this far if you enjoyed and uh yeah thank you guys so much for watching i will talk to you guys in the next one bye